Manchester, New Hampshire has a lot going for it. It's the largest city in the state. Independent sources have ranked Manchester high in affordability, livability, upward mobility, and education. But the city's Achilles heel is drug addiction. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Recently, CNN carried a story entitled, New Hampshire Fire Department Responds to More Overdoses Than Fires. Yes, it's talking about Manchester. The fire department typically treats overdose victims with an emergency medication called Narcan. Not all victims are in their teens or 20s. We've heard of one who was 69. There's one group that goes way beyond the Narcan approach to address the city's heroin and opioid epidemic. Teen Challenge recently held a day of prayer and fasting to end addiction. Zach Brewster is resident life supervisor with Teen Challenge New Hampshire. Zach, thanks for talking with us today. Thanks for having me, Steve. All this comes as a shock to me. I used to vacation in New Hampshire as a kid, mostly like Sunapee. I can recall the old general store and a locomotive that reminded me of the one on Petticoat Junction. What an idyllic environment. How did nearby Manchester come to this? It was coming for the last, you know, decade or so, and from a reliable source that I have in the DEA who runs the 360 program for the Northeast region. And he had given us information just explaining that the cartels specifically targeted the Northeast. And they found that there was a higher price to be charged here, and there was a greater need for narcotics. And so they made a point to flood this area with drugs, and I don't think the prevalency of addiction has really changed. I just think that the more access people have, the more that they're going to do it. I also think that we came to this by having something that was sort of swept under the rug. For a very long time, addiction was an inner city problem, and some place like small town New Hampshire wasn't going to be affected by it. And so I think that uh, treatment options weren't put in place in order to catch the people when they fall. I've been following Teen Challenge for quite some time. I know your ministry has a high recovery rate for addicts. It was founded by the late David Wilkerson of the Cross and the Switchblade fame. What's the cure rate now? I wish that there was larger sample size studies. The sample size studies that people do or um, Teen Challenge uh, has been targeted for research groups in the past have claimed anywhere from a 50 7% success rate to an 87% success rate. The 87% success rate study was done in 1997. It was geared towards people who graduated Teen Challenge, which back then graduating was doing the Teen Challenge program and then doing a six-month internship. And then those people were tracked for five years later, and what they had found was 87% of those people were still living productive lives, which is a good statistic. You know, the numbers dropped a little bit. The most recent study now, I think, was done in 2000. And five uh, at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Very small sample size, but even then, they still found that residents were holding a 67% success rate. Which I imagine is better than uh, any other program that's out there. It is. Therapeutic communities across the country are a minimum nine-month to 12-month long program that is in the secular recovery world. They have 33% uh, success rate uh, that they claim. Anything under that is not holding much better than 6% success rate. So, yeah, we're very proud of what God's done for Teen Challenge. Could you walk us through a typical case? When we do get on the phone with the person who's looking for help, typical thing that we see is that they've done the 28-day programs that their insurance under Obamacare would cover or private health insurance that would cover. They have done them too many times, and they've been to detoxes too many times for the insurance to actually cover it. So basically, Teen Challenge comes a last resort. And so that's from you know the secular world where people have no idea about Teen Challenge. And then we get a lot of phone calls from people who are involved in churches as well. Well, how about a shining success story? I grew up in a great family. I could always feel that I had this void. I had a deep longing to fit in, and that opportunity came when I was 12 years old. I started using pot and alcohol with some older kids, and then I went through high school with 
progressing problem and an illness that wasn't getting treated. As I progressed in age, I ran into people that were doing different drugs, and by the time I was 18, I was addicted to cocaine, and by the time I was 21, I was addicted to heroin and cocaine, and I spent my 20s in and out of jail. I had been arrested multiple times, forced to do a couple short-term programs and treatment options, but nothing seemed to work. I really struggled with trying to stay sober. It was nearly impossible for me. I made some pretty good efforts at it. I overdosed when I was 23 years old, and my parents had to get a phone call from the hospital that both of them worked at, and they were not going to come into work, but they were going to want to come down and make sure that come see me in the emergency room because I had overdosed, and they weren't sure that I was actually going to make it, and I was hooked up to a ventilator for three days, and then after seven days in the hospital, discharged, and I was using heroin three days after that. So uh, I had a clear pattern of an inability to stay drug-free. But at the age of 27, I just found myself at the end of a very, very long road. I was tired. I was homeless in Manchester, and I was held up in a hotel room, gotten high. And for the first time in my life, instantaneously, for some reason, I was overwhelmed by a sense of peace. And I had picked up my buddy's cell phone and called my mom and told that I wanted to go to that place with the teens and the 15 months long, and I was talking about Teen Challenge. Right. And a week later, I had come through the doors of Teen Challenge. That was July 1st of 2013. I gave my life to Christ July 5th of 2013 and graduated the program in 2014 and have been working for them ever since, as well as being a full-time college student, wrapping up a bachelor's degree and applying to medical schools next year. Very good success story from... uh being one of the clients to uh, being one of the leaders. I I congratulate you. Thank you. I I visited New Hampshire about four years ago, and I remember one area seemed to have a spiritual heaviness in the atmosphere. We were driving for several hours, stopped at a McDonald's or Burger King, don't remember which, and we could feel the difference in the air. I don't want to name the city, but I wonder if you have any idea of what was up. There's such a spiritual deficiency in New Hampshire, and there's such a dark cloud hanging over it with addiction that I believe that churches have moved away from the not my problem sort of mentality to what can we do to help this part of our community. We, we help in so many other aspects of community with the needy and the poor, but what can we do to help with this? And, and a lot of it has been prayer and night vigils and all sorts of other events where the community has been able to come together to sort of uh, combat this thing. Well, getting back to Teen Challenge, what have I left out that people need to know? That Teen Challenge is a full recovery program. Teen Challenge uh, not only uh, treats the underlying causes of addiction, deals with mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of the human nature and human being. And we also offer a phenomenal transitional program. So not only do you get inpatient residential treatment, you also be provided if you choose to engage in it. It's a phenomenal aftercare program with uh, a transitional living option. Well, thanks for taking time to talk with us today, Zach. As far as I'm concerned, you are a soldier on the front lines of an important spiritual battle. Appreciate that. Thank you. Zach Brewster is resident life supervisor with Teen Challenge New Hampshire. You can learn more by visiting tcnewhampshire.org. Oh, yeah, there's something else to consider. 275 or so years ago, New England was in crisis. Then the ministry of Jonathan Edwards appeared in Northampton, Massachusetts less than 100 miles southwest of Manchester. Edwards was part of what's been called the First Great Awakening. Hmm, who knows? Maybe another Great Awakening has already started in Manchester and southern New Hampshire. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 